and soul for true folks. I salute those that follow the Jew code. No days off, bringing the light to the people like Akon. Our faith strong like King Kong. We'll move in a moment. And it's zero to a hundred from night to the morning till we get it how we want it. Yeah. Around and around and around we go. Same old things still ain't had enough. Round and around and around we go. Uh, like the truth, it took off like a rocket. Got me going double time like I'm rocking two watches. It feels good to be a prophet surrounded by prophets. And I refuse to be that dog that returned to his vomit. Uh, Father, I'm working to come back to you. Studying the word in the scripts like I'm a character. Keeping these commandments and that's building up my character. Driving out these demons, now no more dodging them challenges. I done away with all those spirits I was entertaining. Hoping and praying that you listen to my supplication. Constantly changing to the guy that you created. I ain't feeling suicidal, but I'm trying to die daily, cause I know the mission, and I know what's waiting in the end, the kingdom's coming, we getting closer, I can feel it, gotta stay diligent, I'm steady playing my position, Lord knows that I don't want to miss it, so I've been going, I've been going double, double, yeah, I've been going double time. Tell me where the love goes. Where the love? Tell me where the love goes. Tell me what it is, what it is, what it was, though. You looking puzzled. Oh, tell me where the love goes. This is the message, keeping it separate, cutting them all off. You can get separate. Tell me now, where did love go? Where did love go? Cutting them off, they dead twice. Something I never get, like his headlights. Is you fronting like headlights, like these niggas? They read scriptures, then they pass them off like flea flickers. At minimum, keep it three digits. It broke my heart seeing Serena spin her father's face. The race you date gave him nothing but hate, but somehow you found a mate where it's not the case. We're watching way, cause God is great. I've been watching from out of space, ain't it separate? This is the message. Cutting them all off, tell me now, where did the love go? Where did the love go? Correction brings perfection, so every lesson I'm perfected. Even though they left in my face, behind my back, they respect me. Got a Midas touch when love is close, close, close. I know your sins when your soul is lost, lost. Let's be honest, for the Father we pay homage, what's your life worth? In every city and every town, he's choosing us first. Can I compare me to a nigga? We let that all burn. From the highways to the hedges, we be telling them be seven, seven, seven. This is the message. Cutting them all off. Tell me now, where did the love go? Where did the love go? Cutting them all off, tell me now, where did the love go? Where did the love go? I know we disagree Seem like we both on different pages It's like we're riding on a roller coaster The ups and downs But I only want it with you, baby You complete me and that's the truth, baby You give me anything I need more What more could I ask for? And we both know Find you gon' hold me down, you will never live with me. 
forgive me, me, I'm sorry. It's my mind. My mind's trying to take me under to become just a wanderer. So I need you more than ever. Don't want to hold you anymore. My mind's trying to take me under to become just a wanderer. Through things, I feel I'm going insane. Why do I run from the pain? Why are these thoughts in the brain? Don't want to be famous, so I try to lay low. Thoughts getting crazy as the days go, but I'm feeling like I need to make more time to get up in my Bible. Want to progress, but myself is my rival. Uh, anger mixed with a little bit of pride inside. I'm still feeling like a bitter nigga, and I know that in a nigga need to die. Wait, wait, what I'm trying to gain? I don't want to get too deep, I refrain. Now I'm trying to box it all in like a frame. Why I said change if I really ain't changed, but I roll with the flow like a boat on rivers. Been feeling still, why they want to take pictures? Stuck where I'm at, like a mouse in a trap, all bullet in the net. What's wrong with you? Saying it's a pleasure, but it got the Go. Don't wanna be cut with a sweat home. Stay strong, get up when you fall. Talking to myself, praying I can talk. Yeah, this thing ain't been easy. But I did that for you. Yeah. My mind's trying to take me under to become just a wanderer. So I need you more than ever. Was a lost boy, was a wanderer, thinking real hard, I'm a ponderer, didn't really know what time it was, but it always seemed to feel ominous, see, I felt I needed no help, autonomous, see, my life in my hands, I almost blew it, harmonica, see, I want to be moving, but feeling, but feeling, but feeling like I'm running in place, I want to feel safe. I hope that this grace here for this backslider for the sometimes I lack fire slash back by the dash act higher than I all hashtag past lie even though that time passed. My mind still be a chastiser. My mind need to be wrapped tighter. I be like, go easy on yourself, but not too easy, dog, cause that's bias. I wonder if I dealt with the same thing in the past life, cause I need help, I just don't act like it. For real. I wanna be moving, but feeling, but feeling, but feeling like I'm running in place. I know I'm awake, I know that we're great, yeah. It's a trial, you just gotta fight through it. That's why I like music. I can read the Bible and just write to it. We not stupid. My mind's trying to take me under to become just a wanderer. So I need you more than ever. Don't want to fold you anymore. My mind's trying to take me under to become just a wanderer. So I need you more than ever. Like a child. Your vibe. This how we do it. Dream team. Champagne every day. Thank God now I'm seeing better days. Party in the hills, we gon' celebrate. Shut it down Saturday to Saturday. Dream team. Champagne every day. Champagne every day. Uh, Champagne every day, champagne every day. Champagne every day. Thank God now I'm seeing better days. Party in the hills, we gon' celebrate. Shut it down Saturday to Saturday. Dream team. Champagne every day, champagne every day. Uh, champagne every day, champagne every day. This can't be real. This feels so real, feels so real, yeah. So baby, don't cry no more. You endured a lot of pain before. 
promise that I'll never leave you again. Cause I'll hold you down forever, you can rest assured. I'm in route. Party with the fam, I'm there, no doubt. We gon' do it bigger than we used to. Everybody's stunning, yeah, we came to show up. I'm best dressed, came to impress. Took the drip, heavy ice on my chest. Fake way with a VIP guest. Real Jews in the building celebrating success. Wow. Champagne every day. Thank God now I'm seeing better days. Party in the hills, we gon' celebrate. Shut it down Saturday to Saturday. Dream team. Champagne every day, champagne every day. Uh, champagne every day, champagne every day. Champagne every day. Thank God now I'm seeing better days. Party in the hills, we gon' celebrate. Shut it down Saturday to Saturday. Dream team. Champagne every day, champagne every day. Uh, champagne every day, champagne every day. Came from the bottom, the struggle is real. Used to labor daily just so I could pay the bills. They kill us every day on the slave fields. I can't find a way to say the way I really feel. They used to squeeze till I'm gone like a spy pimple. When you knew we the gods, but you call us niggas. We was broke, we was lost, they was mocking us. He tried to stop me, now I'm rolling with the top winners. No champagne every day. True, keeping the laws, we find a better way. I was praying for a better day. Now I'm dripping with the ice and the champagne every day. Champagne every day. True, keeping the laws, we find a better way. I was praying for a better day. Now I'm dripping with the ice and the champagne every day. Champagne every day. Thank God now I'm seeing better days. Party in the hills, we gon' celebrate. Shut it down Saturday to Saturday. Dream team. Champagne every day. Champagne every day. Champagne every day, champagne every day. Champagne every day. Thank God now I'm seeing better days. Party in the hills, we gon' celebrate. Shut it down Saturday to Saturday. Dream team. Champagne every day, champagne every day. Uh, champagne every day, champagne every day. Check, check. Hey, Shalom Israel, Most High Christ. Bless. We are about to get started in two minutes. Two minutes. Thank you for your patience.
rise and shine. Prophets on the grind, boost banging like the drum line. Shot the dick and lava Jewish hammer time. It's asinine when they come with a doctrine. You know, stupid, foolish, read the script. The Lord call it silence. And then we hit the school, gotta keep it cool. Bishop class on. Break the bread, wine to the head to get my dance on. Sisters keep it classy, ain't nobody with no pants on. Bitches hanging, fringes swinging, sing another damn song. Turned up, it's just getting burnt up. Kitchen crew gon' get your bed and then it's round two. Soul train line, come and get this truth with the proof. At the same time, you're not alone. Scream what drive you from, welcome home. Come on. I don't know about you, but I gotta tell the truth. I cannot wait until the sun comes down Friday. All this holiness shining bright enough to me. This cottage is like a mansion. All right, Shalom Israel, Most High Christ bless. Most High Christ bless you all. Sorry for the tardiness. I'm just getting off work. I'll be stepping in for um, Captain Barnabas for Tuesday Night Redemption. I'm Officer Alicia from Atlanta Camp. All right, one second. Let me get these things together. Still right there. One second here. Mic check. One. So again, so again, yes. Hold on. Let me get some instance going here first. All right, that's better. That's better. All right, once again, I'm Officer Alicia, and I'll be standing there for Captain Barnabas Tuesday Night Redemption. All right, again, forgive me for my tardiness. All right, I'm just, I'm just getting off work. But let's go ahead and let's get started with tonight's lesson. Um, I've been kind of wrestling with the title, um, you know, but we're going to call it This Is Not Your Rest. This is not your rest, meaning America, society t today is not our rest. <clears throat> we may think, you know, we have our nice jobs, we have houses, we have our families, we have all of the conveniences of America, and we oftentimes forget that there's something else to come, okay? Uh, many of us, you know, we we will see the um, atrocities that happen to our people. We'll see, you know, our people get gunned down and the injustice that's being served. But then we turn off the TV and now we have our nice little place to stay. We go to work, we get our paycheck, right? And we, we kind of lose sense of what's to come, okay? So what I want us to do is to remember, 
that the Lord has something special, something that we can't even imagine. All we have to do is keep his commandments and he's going to show us something that we have never even imagined before. Before we get started, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. 1 Corinthians, or is it 2? First Corinthians chapter two and verse nine. First Corinthians chapter two and verse nine. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of, a, of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. So now the scripture is telling us, Paul is letting us know. He said, listen, you can't even imagine what he has in store for, uh, for us. You can't even imagine. So all the things that we benefit from now, the things that we enjoy now, right? It's some wondrous stuff. You know, I still get blown away with, with internet and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, right? You can, you can get anything you want in this world less than a week. All you got to do is go to Amazon.com. And, and you would get whatever you want with, uh, 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 within a week at your doorstep. I can video chat somebody across the world just by do -do 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 -do. These things we have gotten used to, right? But the Lord said, listen, I have something that's far greater than what you can imagine. Far greater. The glory that he has in store for those who love him will, will, will exceed this far and beyond that we can ever imagine. Read that again. But as it is written, mm -hmm. I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. Neither has it entered into the heart of man because oftentimes we imagine what the kingdom may be like, what heaven may be like, living uh, um, uh, with the Most High and His Son, Jesus the Christ. We can imagine what it may seem like. But Paul said, listen, it has not entered into the heart of man. We don't. The things which God hath prepared for them that love him. So let's, let's get what love is because they say, hey, you know, I do love him. You know, I, I go to church. I, uh, I pay my tithes. Um, I feed the homeless. I was in the soup line last, last weekend making sure that that was good. But let's see what the Bible say love is. Let's get that. First John. First John, let's see what the Bible or the most high, what is his definition of love? Not what man's definition is, but what God's definition is. Read that. First John chapter five, verse three. Uh -huh. For this is the love of God. So the Lord is about to define what love is according to him. Read on. That we keep his commandments. Uh-huh. And his commandments are not grievous. So not only is it we have to keep his commandments, but those commandments cannot be grievous. They are not grievous, right? It is easy to attain. It is easy to accomplish. And at the same time, guess what? You have to enjoy doing it. You have to want to do it. Y'all see that? So we may, we may think that love is, okay, I got to keep these commandments, but the back of your mind, you're like, I really don't want to. That's not love. God said that to keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. That's what love is. So let's keep that in mind. So when we are keeping his laws, make sure that you are enjoying to keep his laws. It shouldn't be a, 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 a force or a hassle for you to do. So if you're dealing with that spirit, hey, Praying fast to the most high. Like, listen, Lord, I want to do this. I desire to please you. Go to Aunt Sirach real fast, chapter 35 and verse 2. We got to have that desire. So he said that he got stuff, things unimaginable, waiting for those who love him. But remember that love is to keep his commandments, right, with faith in Christ, but it cannot be grievous. Read that. Book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 35, verse 2. Yep. He that would quitteth a good turn offereth fine flour. Verse 3. Verse 3. To depart from wickedness. 
is a thing pleasing to the Lord. So to depart from wickedness is a thing that pleases the Lord. To keep his commandments is a thing that is pleasing to the Lord. When you are about to or you are tempted to go into evil and you depart from it, that is a thing that is pleasing unto the Lord. Why? Because in your heart, you want to sin. It's pleasurable. That's what the scriptures say. But if you put the Lord's pleasure above your pleasure, that's love. Y'all see that? Because you have a interest or a desire to please him. That's what love is. Putting yourself aside and going after somebody else's pleasure or uh, longing to please somebody else. That's what love is. Y'all see that? And we must show our love to the Lord by doing what he say, despite of how we may feel or, or whatever worldly desires that we may have on us. Y'all see that? Read it again for me. To depart from wickedness is a thing pleasing to the Lord. Uh -huh. And to forsake unrighteousness is a appropriation. So to forsake unrighteousness, meaning to forsake sin, is a propitiation, meaning that it is an appeasement unto the Lord. He is pleased with that. He is appeased when you forsake sin. All right, so let's keep that in mind. All right? Now, let's get into this, um, the lesson here. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, and I want to start at verse 43. 28 verse 43. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 43. Uh -huh. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. So now, the reason why we're pulling this scripture uh, tonight is... We have to understand the position that we are in, right? Despite of your status, despite of your finances, despite of the neighborhood that you live in, the car that you drive, the Lord said that the stranger shall rise above thee very high. Hey, ask Oprah. She has billions of dollars, but guess what? She was still deemed a nigger. They still look at her as lesser than. Why? Because guess what? You're spending their money. You just have more of their money. That's all that is. This is their society. The there I'm speaking about is the heathen. We are living in America, so guess what? It's the so-called white man. The Bible calls him Esau. So it's a the stranger, in this case, the land that we're living in, Babylon the Great, it's a Esau, it's a shell of... Uh, that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. So imagine what's going on right here. We are in the wilderness. Moses is giving us an ultimatum. He said, listen, I'm going to set before you guys laws. He said, you can either hear or forbear. You can either do or you can reject it. But if you decide to reject it, those strangers that are within you, meaning what? Those strangers was the other nations. At that time, we was exalted above all nations. The Lord just delivered us from Egypt. We was the top nation on the earth. And, 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 and they all knew that. Those strangers that was within us, those were our servants. But the Lord said, listen, if you break my laws, those same servants that are amongst you, that are cooking your meals, right? That are washing your clothes, right? That are plowing your, your, your fields, you say, those very people shall, will rise up um, above the very high. And that's what we see today. So don't get it twisted just because you have a little status or a little money or things are going your way or you got, you know, um, uh, certain advantages within this society. That don't mean that you are above. You are still beneath. That's what the Lord said. So keep that in mind. The reason why we are um, expressing this or emphasizing this is because when you have that certain mindset that you understand that you are low, you would know why you are low. You would know why because you broke God's laws and now you have motivation to keep God's laws. That's the thing. So it's not to try to kick you while you're down or to say that you're lesser than because, the, because God said you are not lesser than. It's just because of what you have done, I have put you lesser than. Y'all see that? Y'all see the difference? This is what we have to realize where we at right now. We have to admit to the status we are at. 
so we can fix it. Read that again for me. Deuteronomy 28, verse 43. Uh -huh. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, uh -huh. and thou shalt come down very low. And thou shalt come down very low. Why? Because we was above all nations at this time. But he said, you shall become very, very low. So as a nation of people, that's what we see. We go to camp each and every Sabbath. Well, hey, we do it each and every day out here. Right. And where, where, where we go, we go into the ghettos. And every place that we go, whether it's the ghettos, whether it's the suburbs, whether it's the city, our people are very low. Believe that. Read on. He shall lend to thee. And thou shalt not lend to him. It said that he shall lend to thee. These are your servants. The current time. Remember the, 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 um, where we at today, right? I mean, I'm sorry, during this time frame. Remember the status, the structure. It said that the stranger that is within thee, your servants, your man, your maid servants, your man servants, it said, guess what? At a certain point in time, if you break my laws, they shall lend to you. Now, we're looking at this like this. You got to be kidding me. These people right here, the ones that we are um, 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 above, the ones that we are giving money to, if we feel like it, these people right here, they're going to be above us. That's what God said, and that's exactly what happened. Read on. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. And that's exactly what we see, so we have to Keep that in mind. We are the tail. Why? Because we broke God's laws. So we must strive each and every day, each and every day, each and every minute of the day to reverse that cycle. The Lord is waiting for us to just reverse it. He's given us the solution right here. He told us, listen, if you want this to change, if you want this, this society to be flipped upside down, keep my commandments. That's why we have a daily reminder. And the Lord said he's going to keep turning up the heat each and every day, each and every year. Because why? We don't get it yet as a people. We thinking that we all won. We thinking that we good. We thinking that this is our kingdom. But no, this is not our rest. Keep that in mind. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 28, same chapter, verse 37 now. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. So this was during a time you got to keep going back to the time frame that we was in. The current condition at this time was a nation, a heathen, wouldn't dare talk strange to us, would not talk out of pocket to us. But the Lord said, listen, you, are, you shall become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword amongst all these nations that you deem as inferior. Hold that. Go to Exodus real fast, chapter 11. Let me just show you something and, and the way that we dealt with the heathen or the way that they respected us during this time frame. Uh, uh, Exodus chapter 11, verse 7. Exodus chapter 11, verse 7. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue. Y'all see that? It said against the children of Israel, not even a dog shall move his tongue. Those dogs, it's speaking about who? These other nations. It said a dog would not move his tongue against the children of Israel. But if you break my laws, they're going to call you all sorts of evil. Understand that. And then that's what we see today. Shiftless, no good, Right? When you go into a white neighborhood, a white um, uh, plaza or, or, or place of commerce, what are they doing? They're looking at you strange, like, why are you here? They're clutching their purse when they see young black males walking by, right? You walk inside one of these expensive stores, these are name brand stores, they're looking at you like, security guard, go watch them. Let's see what they, watch them. But during this time frame, they was begging for us to be around them. They would love to be around us. They wouldn't, a dog wouldn't even move their tongue against us. Y'all see that? But the Lord has flipped everything upside down. 
and we must understand the current condition that we are in so we can get up out of this. Understand where we at. Go to Lamentations chapter 2, verse 15. Let's get some more. Lamentations chapter 2, verse 15. Yes, sir, verse 15. Lamentations chapter 2, verse 15. Uh-huh. All that pass by clap their hands at thee. They hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem, saying, Is this the city that men call the perfection of beauty, hmm. the joy of the whole earth? Y'all see this? All throughout the scriptures, you are seeing Deuteronomy 28 37 right here. But it happens eventually. I mean, not eventually. It happens continuously over and over again. Generation through generation. They wag their tongues at us. They shake their heads. They say, is this the beauty? That's what they're saying today. And guess what? Partially they're right. Because if you look at our society, the beauty is gone. But why? Because we're following after the heathen. We have uh, 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 forsooken God's laws. So, yes, we're not beautiful. God's laws beautify us. So, yes, to some degree, they're right. But the point I'm trying to make is everything has been flipped upside down. But the point I want us to make and continue to make tonight is that we must remember where we're at so we can get up out of it. The first step to solving the problem is what? Acknowledging. Acknowledgement. Our people, we, we tend to turn a blind eye to what's going on. Right? We tend to uh, retreat back to our finances, retreat back to our houses and cars and clothes and the beauty of America to try to escape what's really going on, the current conditions that we're in. But the Bible tells us over and over and over again where we yet and how to get out of it. All right? So now let's go to Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. So we've seen all of these different scenarios, right? Prophecies that came to pass about the children of Israel are going to be ridiculed. They're going to be talked about. They're going to be a proverb and a byword. These other nations, these inferior nations are going to wag their, their tongue at us. And, they, and, it, and it, has, it came to pass. We are in a lower state. But let's see what the Bible say. Read that. Revelation chapter 2 verse 9. Uh-huh. I know thy works and tribulation. So the Lord sees all. The Lord sees exactly what we're going through. He said, I know thy works and what? And tribulation. He's seen everything that's happened to us. We, he's seen how we have been a, uh, uh, became degenerate. He's seen how the heathens are, 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 are um, disrespecting us. He's seen all these things that's happening. But, read, I know thy works and tribulation Uh and poverty. And poverty, read, but thou art rich. So he said, but guess what? You're rich. He said, I see all of the atrocities and the afflictions that are happening to you. He said, but you are rich. Keep that in mind. Yes, we must um, be mindful of the current state that we're in. But the Lord said, guess what? You are rich. Rich in what, though? Let's go. What scripture is that? Let's go to uh, Romans. Romans 11. Because is he speaking about money? Is is that what the Lord is speaking about right here? Nah. Let's see what he's talking about. What's that? Romans. What's that? 11. No, 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 no. Hold on. That's not what I want. Uh, I know what you're talking about, but that's not what I'm looking for. Romans 11 and 33. He said, but thou art rich. Is he talking about Ben Franklin's dollar dollar bills, y'all? What are you talking about? Read that. Romans chapter 11, verse 33. Oh, the depth of the riches. Of the what? Of the riches. Mm -hmm. Both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. You see that? That's your riches. The Lord said, thou art rich. Why? Because you have wisdom and understanding. You have wisdom and you have knowledge. 
right? That's what the Lord said that you are rich of. Hold that, go to um, Deuteronomy. He said, those are your riches. Deuteronomy chapter, what is that, four? Yes, chapter four and verse six. Deuteronomy chapter four, verse six. Keep therefore and do them. Mm -hmm. For this is your wisdom. And your understanding. See, those are those riches that the Lord is talking about. He said, but thou art rich. These are the riches that he's speaking about right here. Knowledge and understanding. Read on. For this is your wisdom and your understanding uh -huh. in the sight of the nation. In the sight of who? Of the nation. You see that the Lord is saying, listen, I see your struggles. I see that your, uh, your tribulations and your poverty, but you have knowledge and understanding in the sight of these nations. We don't. Which shall hear all these statutes mm -hmm. and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So that's your riches. This, this people right here, this nation of people, the nation of Israel is a wise and understanding people. They say all nations shall flow unto thee, seeking knowledge, seeking the understanding, Right? And guess what comes along with it? Guess what? We're not going to have to, in the kingdom to come, the scripture tells us that what? These nations, the sons of the Gentiles, the sons of the strangers shall bring forth their wealth. As they're coming for that knowledge and uh, 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 wisdom, guess what they're bringing with them? They're bringing forth the forces of the Gentiles, right? Their wealth, their, 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 their precious things. So understand that. We have riches in store for us. All we have to do is keep his commandments, right? Knowledge and understanding. All right? So let's go now. Let's go to um, Second Edges. Second Edges chapter 7. Oh, finish that out. Yeah, finish that out. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. Uh-huh. I know thy works and tribulation mm -hmm. and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. So the Lord is beholding those infiltrators, those blasphemers, who are saying they are the real Jews, but they are not. They are not the true Jews. They don't have the riches of God. Right? Right? They are not the ones who are longing or waiting for things that are unimaginable like we read in the first Corinthians earlier. Eyes have not seen, ears have, have not heard. That does not pertain to them. But the way that we get there is what? We have to stay within these commandments, right? Making sure that we love God and it's not grievous. So we can have everything turned right side up because it's upside down like the scriptures say. Finish that out. I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, mm -hmm. but are the synagogue of Satan. So they are the devil, the Bible speaker. They are the devil. They are deceivers. Devil means what? Adversary, deceiver. That's who they are. That's who they truly are. Uh, let's go to Second Edges chapter 7. And let's start at verse 41. Second Ezra, chapter 7, verse 41. Uh -huh. Even so now, seeing corruption is grown up and wickedness increased, and the righteousness have prayed for the ungodly. And the righteous have prayed for the ungodly. Read on. Excuse me. And the righteous have prayed for the ungodly. Uh -huh. Wherefore shall it not be so now also? Mm -hmm. He answered me and said, this present life is not the end where much glory doth abide. Therefore, have they prayed for the weak. So now, this is the point I want to make. You say, this present life is not the end where much glory doth abide. So, it lets us know right here that there is something to come after. This, 
you know, in spite of how glorious this 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 kingdom may seem, right? The scripture itself say what? This is the golden city, right? There's much to enjoy within this 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 kingdom, right? That's why so many of our people are so they reject God's law, they reject the truth so easily because they are enjoying what America has to offer. Other nations, they flow here. They call this the great melting pot. Why? Because they want to enjoy what America has to offer. So, yes, there are some temptations here. God said that he's going to raise up this kingdom. He's, 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 he's going to raise up Esau the same way he raised up Egypt, and he's going to knock them down. So, yes, there are some perks. There are some benefits here. There are some pleasures here. But right here it tells us that this is not, this present life that we're in is not the end where much glory doth abide. Meaning that there is much glory to come. You know? But the day of doom shall be the end of this time. Hold on, read that from the top again, verse 42. Yes, sir. He answered me and said, This present life is not the end where much glory doth abide. Therefore, have they prayed for the weak? So I say, therefore, they. You know who the they is? The they is speaking about those prophets. The prophets, they pray for the weak. Who are the weak? The weak of our nation. That's what we're doing each and every day. We go out and we're trying to compel our brothers and sisters to come in. They say, they, the righteous, they compel or they pray for the weak, right? But what, what makes us weak? Go to Proverbs chapter 24. They say they pray for the weak. What does it mean to be weak in um, this society here, this kingdom right here? Read that. Verse 10, I'm sorry. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 10. If thou faint in the day of adversity, Thy strength is small. So here's one example of being weak. It say thy strength is small, meaning what? You're weak. It say that if you faint in the day of adversity, meaning that you don't stand strong for God's laws, you reject the truth, right? Because why? You rather just easily enjoy. It's, it's so easy to enjoy the pleasures of sin. It's very, very easy. That's what makes it weak. Those who can just easily just go into sin, that's weak. But those who stand strong stiffly, despite of the pleasures that they are presented. You turn on the TV and social media, it's all over the place. But those who reject that and stand stiffly, though they are considered the strong. But it say that if thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. So now, it say they must pray for the weak. Those whose strength is small, they, I mean, those who faint in adversity, the righteous are the ones who pray for them. The pray meaning they're compelling them to come back to God's laws, to keep God's laws, to come back to their heritage. Now, see that? That's what makes them strong. Go to 2 Timothy. Let's get, let's get one example here. Because this is directed to those who know this truth, but they get uh, overwhelmed with the pleasures of sin. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 10. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 10. Mm -hmm. For Damas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. Having doing what? Having loved this present world. World. So that what makes him, Demas was weak. Demas was weak because he enjoyed the pleasures of this world. That's what it say, right? Pleasures? What did it say? For Demas had forsaken me, having loved this present world. Having loved this present world. So yes, this particular brother was with Paul. He was striving with Paul. He knew the, the, the kingdom to come. He knew the, 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 uh, the reward to keep God's laws, what was to come. They talked about it all the time. They went from city to city, from synagogue to synagogue, trying to compel the people to come back in based upon the, 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 
the, um, the blessing that the, the Most High promised us. But guess what? He became weak. Why? Because of the present world. And we got to decipher between what we're seeing now. Hold that. Go to First John real fast. Let me prove something real fast. Because we can know the prophecies all day long. We can know the scriptures all day long. We go back and forth, bring, over, uh, bring out precepts, right? But if it's not present, many of our people, they, they lose faith, right? They faint in the day of adversity. That adversity is when that sin is presented to them. What you're going to do? The weak, the weak hearted, they faint. Why? Because they love the present world. Because that's what they can see. That's what they can touch. That's what they can feel. It's very easy to be succumbed to something that you can see versus you waiting for something, wishing for something that the Lord just say, hey, just, just hold tight. It's coming. The kingdom we can't see. The kingdom we can't touch. So it's, it's, it's nothing but faith that we are driven upon when it comes to the kingdom. But when you have sin in your face, it is very easy for us to, to come to it. But if you're weak, you're going to fall in that day, the day of adversity. But if you're strong, you're going to stand stiffly and believe in what God say. That's why we went to these, these scriptures beforehand. First Corinthians, where it say, eyes are not here, uh, uh, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, or your heart, it couldn't even uh, imagine. This 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 journey is a walk of faith. But read that. First John chapter 2, verse 15. First John chapter 2, verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. It say, love not the world. Neither the things that are in this world. Read on. If any man love the world, the love of the Father. Is not in him. So the Lord is letting us know. He said, listen, he is the exact opposite of this present world. He said, if you have love of this world, he's specifically talking about sin, the ways of the heathen. If you love that, you do not have the love of the Father. Let's make that clear. He's talking about sin. If you enjoy sin, you are complete opposite with the Father. You don't have the love of the love of the Father within you. But read on. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of, the li of life is not of the Father, uh -huh. but of the world, but, but is of, of the world. But is of the world. He's letting you know the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, all these different things that we faint, our people, they faint in the day of adversity they're proving that they don't have the love of the Father in them. Read on. And the world passes away. That's passes the, away. That's the point I want to make right here. I want to touch on that. It say that the world passeth away. So that should be faith, a faith builder right there. He said, listen, despite of how pleasurable that may be, your sin may be, how desirable it may f uh, uh, look or feel or taste, whatever the case it say it passeth away. Meaning what? It's only temporary. Read on. And the world passeth away, uh -huh. and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So that's what we should be striving to do is to abide forever. Anything that passes away, anything that is temporary is not worth it. That's what the Lord is trying to teach us. That's why he took away life in the beginning. When, 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 um, when Adam sinned, he, he took away the most precious thing that we could, we could have, and that's life. Once he introduced death, life became unprofitable. Imagine you having all of these things that you're building up upon during this life, all of the riches and all these different goals and aspirations, right? You can, all these accomplishments, and then what? You die. That's what King Solomon said. He said, he said, vanity of vanity. This life is all vanity. Why? Because he's saying you could do all this, and then you have to give it away to somebody else when you die. 
That's why Christ is coming back with eternal life, the greatest gift that you can have. So we have to understand that our present life that we're living, the sin or the lust thereof, the pride of life, is only temporary. So you should not go after something that is going to eventually pass away because it's not worth it. He says, strive for something that lasts forever. Y'all see that? Finish that out. Verse 18. Little children, it is the last time. Okay, that's all I want. Yes, sir. That's all I want. Let's go back now. Let's go. Let's go back. Let's go to um, Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. I want to start at verse 24. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24. Uh -huh. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. So now, Moses is an example for us to follow. Moses was, uh, he was very um, influential in Egypt. He was a very honorable man. He was of high status in Egypt. Egypt was the greatest umpire during that time. It was the ruling class. It was the ruling nation during that time frame. And he was of the elite and he decided to give all that up. Give it all up. Why? Read on. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God mm -hmm. than to enjoy the pleasures of sin you for a that? season. For what? For a season. So Moses understood that this, this pleasure is only for a season. This sin is only for a season. So I'd rather hold it down with my people. Because he understood that there was something greater. The point we're trying to make is that this present life is not the end where glory doth abide. Moses knew that. He had it, he, he, Moses had anything he wanted at his fingertips, but he knew that it was only for a season. We got to have that same mindset. It's this sin that we are being tempted by, it's only for a season. If it's not going to last... It's not worth it. God said, I have something greater, something that's going to last forever. That's what we need to be striving to. Moses knew that, and we need to follow his example. We don't. Esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. You see that it was greater riches. What Christ has to offer for us is greater than the riches of Egypt. What Christ has to offer for us is greater than the riches of America. And we got to have that same mindset that Moses had to let go of all of this stuff that we can enjoy for a season and be looking towards something that Christ said will last forever and ever and ever and ever. No more us having to, you know, wake up and having to grind and having to work and having to labor for blessings and for riches and for uh, 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 um, the good things in life. The Lord said, no, I got it sitting right here for you. All you got to do is just get through this right here. Show me that you have learned your lesson. And I have everything in store for you. So Things that you can't even imagine that's going to last forever. Not just for a lifetime, but forever. Okay, let's go back. Let's go to... Um, second there, just go back to second there, just chapter seven. And I believe we are at 43 now. Yes, yeah. sir. Second Ezra chapter seven, verse 43. Uh -huh. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time and the beginning of the immortality for to come. Mm -hmm. Wherein corruption is past. So let's say the day of doom shall be the end of this time. Each and every prophet speaks about the day of doom. From the beginning of time, even until now, it's being prophesied of this day of doom. They say that this day of doom shall be the end of this time. What's, what's the time frame that he's speaking about? The, the Gentiles ruling. It said once Christ returned with World War III with those nukes, once he destroyed this land, he's going to reset the order. He said, right now, it's the Gentiles' time to rule. Why? Because we broke his laws. So he said, listen, 
they are going to rule over you until you learn your lesson. But during that day of doom, that's going to be the end of this time. So that's going to be the end of all that pleasure that you're having and those who are weak, those who have fainted within the day, the day of um, um, adversity, and they're just en um, enjoying sin. It say when that time comes, all your pleasures, it comes to an end. And now you're going to have to meet your judgment forever and ever and ever. Understand that. You have to be strong within this truth. This walk is a, a, a walk of strength. You got to show the Lord that you are strong enough to fight off any desires. He's trying to see where your loyalty lies. Do, you, do, do your loyalty lies with yourself, meaning what I'm going to go after my own personal desires, or am I going to go after what you want from me? And those who pass the test, they shall receive a reward. Read that again for me, verse 43. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time and the beginning of the immortality for to come, uh -huh. wherein corruption is past, mm -hmm. intemperance is at an end, infidelity is cut off, righteousness is grown, and truth is sprung up. Uh -huh, read. Then, then shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed, nor to oppress him that have gotten the victory. So now, it said during that time frame, he, the Lord is going to set everything in order. But guess what? He's saying, listen, there are no more second chances. He said, this is it. He said, then shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed. He's letting you know when that day of doom come, that's it. There's no more saving. There's no more second chances. Christ is not going to get upon that cross again for nobody, ever. He's not doing that again. So we must take this time seriously. We must take this grace seriously. Because when that time comes, he said, listen, hey, there won't be no more. No more grace. Go to Hebrews 6, 6 and 4. Get that. Hebrews 6 and 4. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavy, heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. It said, for it is impossible for those who was once enlightened. So you, was, you knew the promises to come. You did what you were supposed to do uh, for a time to keep his laws and repent with faith in Christ. So you can receive um, um, his blessings. He said, you was enlightened. You, you knew what this life was about. You knew why you was in the position that you was in, and you knew what was to come. Read on. And have tasted the good word of God. And you have tasted the good word of God. You was getting the understanding of these scriptures. You understood that this Bible was for you. Read on. And the powers of the world to come. And he understood the powers was um, for the world to come, of the world to come. You, he knew, he or she knew, guess what? The kingdom is for Israel. All I got to do is keep these laws with faith in Christ, and guess what? We will be in power. You knew that, but we don't. If, if they shall fall away. If they shall fall away despite of knowing, uh, uh, despite of being enlightened, despite of tasting of the heavenly gift, despite of being partakers of the Holy Ghost, it's that if they shall fall away from that, read, to renew them again unto repentance, uh -huh. seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. The Lord is saying, listen, if you um, turn your back to the things that I have given you, Guess what? This is a, bro, this, there's nothing greater than being chosen to taste of the heavenly gift or to be partakers of the Holy Ghost. There's nothing greater. But if you decide to turn your back against that and you go after the pleasures of this world, God said, listen, there is no more second chances for you. There's no more second chances. That's why he said, there should, uh, back in second Erdrus, he said that um, nobody can save you. 
that has been destroyed. Because he said, listen, you will not get a second chance. I sent my only begotten son down here to die on the cross for your sins, and you still turn your back? There's no more second chances for you. We don't. For the earth, which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it, and bringeth forth herbs, meat for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth the blessing from God. Uh -huh. But that which beareth thorns and bear briars is rejected, and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. You see that? So it says, For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh off upon it, and bringeth forth herbs, meat for them by whom it is dressed, receive blessings from God. So those who are doing the works of God, those who are uh, nurturing the fruits of the Spirit, they shall receive a blessing from God. But that which bear thorns and briars is rejected. Those who turn their back against God are known as thorns and briars. Nobody wants thorns and briars within their garden. They are rejected. So those who bear fruit, the Lord is going to deal with. But those who are, uh, uh, they have thorns and briars who are um, not um, doing what's required of them, they shall be taken away and burned. That's what the Lord has in store for them. We don't. But, beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. So now, let's go back. Go back now. Go to our second edge chapter 9. Second Ezra chapter 9. And let's start at verse 7. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 7. And every one that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works. By his what? By his works. Uh-huh. And by faith, whereby ye have believed, shall be preserved from the said perils. Perils, yep. And shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. Mm -hmm. For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Read. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my way. This is the point. Read. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torment. So these are those who rejected God in the space of grace. It said, then shall they be in a pitiful case, which now, meaning present life, have abused my ways, meaning what? They turned, they rejected God's laws. They looked at it as a small thing, and they said, you know what? I'd rather fulfill my desires versus God's ways, which is his laws. He said, then they shall be in a pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and they, read, I'm sorry, read that. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torment. They say that they shall dwell in torment, meaning that they will still be alive even after their death. They shall dwell in torment. Hold that. Go to Isaiah 66. Whatever that means, whatever state that is where you are dead but yet alive just to feel the pain of death, I want no parts of that. That's why I'd rather uh, re uh, refrain from um, um, the pleasures of sin and I'd rather look forward to what the Lord has to, to, to offer me versus this that's going to pass away. Read that. Uh, Isaiah 66 and give me verse 20, 23. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 23. Uh, and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. So it say that from one new moon to the next, from one Sabbath to the next. This is in the kingdom. That lets you know, guess what? These laws will never be done away with. Never. The churches are teaching lies. God said his Sabbath days, his new moons, everybody's going to worship me. 
and they are going to go and they're going to visit those who transgressed against him. Those men and women who fainted in the day of adversity. Those men and women who um, despitefully rejected God's laws and went after their own lust. These are the spirits that he's speaking about right here. Read that again, verse 24. Verse 24. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. Uh -huh. For their worm shall not die. For their worm shall not die. Worm means death. When your body is decaying, worms are there eating your carcass. But it say that the worms shall not die because guess what? At a certain point, once your carcass is, is uh, decayed and turned to ashes, there's no more need for the worms to be there. But the Bible said that the worms should never die. Why? Because you're going to be dwelling in, at some degree. Even though that you're dead, you're still going to be living, enduring the pains of death. This is what the Lord is warning us. He said, listen, all you got to do is keep my commandments. I'm warning you what's going to happen if you decide just to have this pleasure for a season. You may enjoy it now, but look, this is what's to come. And this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to warn each other, exhort one another right now. Because that day is approaching. Finish that out. For their worms shall not die. Uh -huh. Neither shall their fire be quenched. And they shall be abhorring unto all flesh. So now it said you shall be abhorring to all flesh. That's include the heathen. The heathen going to look at this, you like, damn, I can't believe he was, he had the chance to rule over me. He, this man had a chance. This doesn't had a chance to be the ruling class, to be amongst the most high God. But he decided to go after his lust. He had a chance. That, the Most High gave him a, 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 a second chance when he, well, once his nation decided to go off, he gave them a second chance, and he still messed it up. That's that abhorring. They're going to be talking about you, and guess what? You're going, those who decide to, to follow their, their lust, they're going to be able to hear that. They're going to be able to, to have that, 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 that sense of regret. Imagine having that regret for the rest of eternity. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. I can't stand that, that feeling of woulda, coulda, shoulda. Today. I shoulda did that. I coulda did that. I coulda did this better. I coulda did that better. That's a horrible feeling. Imagine having that for eternity. Imagine that. Go to Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13. Going to wind this thing down. Hebrews 3, 13. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13. Uh -huh. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So it said that we must exhort one another daily. To exhort means to what? We have to warn each other strongly. This is a warning for all of us. We must do this thing daily while it is called today. We must do this on a daily basis. Why? Because it said we can be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. It is very deceivable. It's when something is pleasurable, you would justify why you should do it. That's why you must be around those who are seeking the same thing you seek, which is the kingdom. So when you're going off, somebody is there to correct you, to, to exhort you, to urge you, that's not the way. You're in the midst of sin. That's only going to last for a season. Get right. Go to Hebrews 10 now. Hebrews chapter 10, and let's start at verse 24. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24. Uh -huh. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, so not for... Hold up. It's saying, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. That's our job. That's our responsibility towards one another. That's your social responsibility. To provoke unto love and to good work. Hey, do me a favor. I just want one quick uh, definition, soldier. 
Give me one quick definition, and I want the the definition of provoke. What does it mean? Because this is something that is required of us. It say, and let us consider one another. So we have to consider one another, to love one another. How? By provoking unto love and to good works. What's love again? To say to keep his commandments, and his commandments be not grievous. Right. So now. What does it mean to provoke? Let's look at that definition, so, uh, officer. Provoke. Stimulate or give rise to a reaction or emotion, typically a strong or unwelcome one in someone. So guess what? To provoke, sometimes it may not feel good. It doesn't feel good to be corrected. It doesn't feel good when somebody says, hey, bro, you're going off. That's fine. The scriptures say that we have to provoke one another. It says sometimes it's... Um, is typically a strong or unwelcome one. Sometimes it takes that for us to get back right. Sometimes it takes a little shaking up. It's going to be uh, 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 um, unwelcome at times, but we understand that the end result is for us to repent so we can get the kingdom of heaven. Read the next one. Stimulate or incite someone to do or feel something especially by arousing anger in them. So now, some of the times it may arouse a lot of anger. That's our initial response. That's fine. But understand this. Once you get past that initial anger, do what they have been provoking you to do, and that's to keep his commandments. Read the next one. Deliberately make someone annoyed or angry. So it says deliberately make someone annoyed or angry. Sometimes, like I say, the correction may be grievous, but it's for our betterment. That's the word, betterment? For our betterment. Yes, sir. All right? So when you get corrected, guess what? It is all love. It is all love. Finish that out. Go back to Hebrews chapter 10, and I want verse 24 and 25. Yes, sir. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. So we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. The scriptures tells us we must be amongst one another. We must be around those who keep God's laws, who are striving to keep his commandments, and who are striving to, um, to forsake sin. Those who realize that sin is only for a temporary time, the, we need to be around those people. Why? Because when so-and-so go off, you got a whole body, congregation, who is going to try to reel you back in. Why? Because it's all love. That's what love is. We don't? As the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as ye see the day approaching, for if we sin willfully. Hold up, it say, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, because you have those uh, lonely nights that do it. There was some back then. Why? Because they couldn't stand the correction. They wanted to sin. Let, let me sin in peace. That's the mentality that they had. But it say, but exhorting one another, and so the much more as you see the day approaching. What's that day? The day of doom. As you see that day approaching, we must exhort each other more and more and more. That's why I guess what? You're going to see correction coming out more and more and more as the day approaching. So many of us, we get shooken up when we see brothers and sisters getting stood up and corrected or corrected personally. But guess what? God said, listen, the day is approaching, so I got to get y'all right. And it's up to us to accept that correction. Yes, it may be a time of, uh, it may be, um, you may get incited with anger or um, annoyed. But guess what? At the end of the day, it's all love. Last scripture. Let's go to Psalms 141 and verse 5. I think that's what I want. Yeah, 141 verse, verse 5. Psalms, chapter 141, verse 5. Let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness. 
and let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil. The scriptures say that let the righteous smite me. Now, I'm not talking about fist fighting, but it's talking about correction. It say let the righteous man, those who are striving to, uh, to get the kingdom, those who are striving to depart from unrighteousness or forsake unrighteousness, right? It say let them smite me. Why? Because it is a kindness. It is love because we know the end result of that smite, right? The end result or the, the, the intention is for us to keep God's laws. I see you going off. I'm going to smite you. It's not going to feel good. It's going to be unwelcome like the, uh, the definition say. I may have a little annoyance as the definition say, but it is a kindness. So once you step inside these doors, expect to get smitten. But it's all love. Because guess what? When you smite me, guess what? At some point in time, you're going to have to, um, I got to smite you, you got to smite me at, at some point in time. Because we know we all trying to get this kingdom together. Finish that out. Let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness. Uh -huh. And let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil. Which shall not break my head. It shall not break your head. It is, it is not something that's deadly. It is not something that's terminal. It is, it won't break your head, but it's going to actually build you up. It's going to do the exact opposite. We don't. For yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. You see that? So now, understand that the correction is vital. It is necessary. Right? Keep in mind the, the point of today's class is that we must understand where we're at, the conditions that we're in, so we can come out of it, right? We must also remember that uh, this, this, this time of grace, we must take it seriously. It's not something just to be joking around with, to play around with, to take as a light thing, because why? The Lord is coming in that day of doom. When, when that day of doom hit, whenever that day hit, he said, that's it. There, there are no more second chances. So we must take this thing seriously, okay? You don't want to be here in this life on the bottom, and then in the next life, you're still on the bottom. You have the opportunity to change, to, to, to uh, receive the blessing that the Most High has promised us. Take advantage of it. Especially those who hear this truth that the Lord said that have tasted of the heavenly gift, you are special because two-thirds of your people won't even get this. You have the opportunity now to get it. So do not take this time lightly. Take your grace seriously. All right? And I hope y'all have um, learned something or have been exhorted during this time. I appreciate Captain Barnabas giving me uh, the opportunity um, to teach, and I pray that y'all have learned something from tonight's class. And um, brothers and sisters, uh, we say shalom, most high in Christ, bless you all. I'm gonna take my throne, and I'm gonna sing my